Welcome back to another video. So in a previous video, I upgraded from this Mac Pro 5,1 to a trash can Mac. And I've gotten a lot of questions, feedback, comments, and people are wondering, how's it been going? Is this something worth doing? And I wanted to make a video quick to go over how things have been and uh, give you my feedback on this project. So stick around and let's find out how things went. All right, so for starters, um, you know, I really like the form factor of the trash can Mac. You know, I've kind of, I guess, always wanted one since they were first announced, but I couldn't justify spending, you know, the thousands of dollars they cost new. And until recently, even the resale prices were pretty high. Um, I forget what I got this one for, but I think it was uh, under 300. It's it's all in the original video when I talk about it. But, uh, you know, in replacing this 5 comma 1, it was a workhorse and I've got, you know, tons and tons of storage in here. Um, one of the problems I had with this one is I didn't have the original Wi-Fi card with it, so I had to go out and buy an aftermarket Wi-Fi card for it. And this is some uh, Netgear thing. Um, it turns out there wasn't a lot of uh, compatible Wi-Fi cards for a 5 comma 1. Um, and I couldn't justify spending the money to buy an official Apple one. And I'm not sure if those work with uh, OpenCore or Legacy Patcher. Anyway, they they may, they may not. I don't, don't I didn't try. Don't take my word for it. But um, I got this aftermarket one, which was great, uh, except I couldn't do AirDrop with it because it didn't support it. So with the, the trash can Mac here, um, everything is much more native running OpenCore Legacy Patcher. I mean, uh, I put OpenCore Legacy Patcher on both of them, obviously, but um, it feels, feels much more like I'm running on a machine that it was meant to run on. I haven't really encountered any sort of stability issues or any problems with any of the hardware. Um, I also haven't upgraded anything. So this has the stock video cards in it. It's got the stock hard drive, stock RAM, stock processor. And there are a lot of upgrades you can make to it to make it better. But my goal here was to, you know, buy this trash can Mac, keep it as stock as possible, you know, keep it as cheap as possible and get it running the latest Mac OS that I could. So uh, let's go ahead and switch over to running on the Mac directly, and I'll be using OBS Studio running on the trash can Mac to uh, capture the next part of this video to give you an idea of performance. All right, well, here we are on my trash can Mac. This is the Mac Pro late 2013. Um, as you can see, I'm still running Sonoma 14.2.1, and that was the same OS that I installed when I made the first video using, uh, obviously, OpenCore Legacy Patcher, or CLP. So I think the question a lot of people have asked is, you know, if I can get one of these for 300 bucks in the in the base configuration that looks like this, is that going to be worth it? So, I, I may not have the answer, but I will show you my experience with it. So let's go ahead and uh, you know take, take a look at some things, and you know we'll see how things shape up. So I've been using this machine now as a daily driver for uh, a number of weeks. Um, you know, I had first been using it mostly for just video editing, but with all the response I got in the video that I made about installing. Uh, Sonoma on this trash can Mac. I wanted to spend a little bit more time with it and you know really use it to see if everything was uh, usable, I guess you could say. Uh, so I'm maybe a bad Apple user. I use the Microsoft Productivity Suite. Um, just kind of what I need for everything that I do. So yeah, I use you know PowerPoint, Word, Excel, Outlook, and unfortunately Teams. It's just kind of everything I need to do my job. Uh, anyway, I use the Microsoft Productivity Suite, and it works fine. Uh, I don't really have any problems with anything. Um, it works just like you would expect it to work. It looks you know, almost identical to what you see on Windows with a few Mac tweaks here and there, but there's no performance issues. Um, you know, If I go through and, and click all these things, you know, obviously there's no lag. Everything just loads just you know, in just fine. And, it seems like everything's great. Um, now I haven't done like an apples to apples, ah, get it, comparison um, with like an M1, um, which I have, uh, you know, an M1 Mini that I use for my work, and I have a, an M1 MacBook Air that I use for other things as well. Um, but you know, just just going through these things, it really doesn't seem like there's any problem with using this productivity application. So one thing I've been using more than Safari is Chrome. Um, I really like the way Chrome has the uh, cross-platform uh, bookmark sync, uh, username sync, things like that. 
so I use Google Chrome on all my devices. Um, so I'm not really saying anything bad against Safari. I'm just saying that with you know my PCs that I have here, my PCs that I have there, and my other Macs and my phone, uh, using Chrome makes a lot of sense. Bookmark Sync has saved me a ton of time. You know, not having to try to remember something that I had on a computer somewhere. I can sign in with my account and I can get my bookmarks anywhere. So I will tell you on my M1 Mini, um, it's got eight gigabytes of RAM and Chrome has run it out of RAM on a couple of occasions. I haven't had that problem on this system. It's got 16 gigs of RAM and it doesn't have, uh, you know, nearly as much limitations with the unified memory that the M1 chips do. So I think in that sense, uh, you know, using Chrome has been a better experience on this than the M1 mini, but of course that's, you know, the most base M1 mini you can get and um, it's very limited in what it can do. So I think in terms of web browsing, uh, this machine has been working better than the M1 mini. All right, so let's then move on and look at some tech specs. So I ran a Geekbench on this system, you know, correctly detected my processor and the RAM and the OS. Um, but I think what Geekbench has set is a score of 2500 is supposed to be a uh, 12th gen i7, um, more or less. Uh, I forget the exact model number, but I think it's a 12700K is the 2500 uh, Geekbench. So let's just look. Yeah, 127, not the K, 12700. So if we get a 2500, that means the CPU is equivalent to a Core i7 12th gen. But as you can see here, uh, we've actually beat that. So this 11 year old computer is doing better than the 12th core consumer processor. Now obviously the Xeons are designed to be workstation type processors. Um, Xeons are very powerful chips, even 11 year old Xeons are very powerful chips, so that's really no surprise there. Um, but what is kind of surprising, so if we look at our score of 2802 and we compare that to other Macs that have been reported, um, you know, 2802 is the same score that an M2 Max is getting with 12 CPU cores. So it's, it's fairly interesting, I would say, to note that this 11 year old machine is uh, CPU is performing equivalent to an M2 Max, um, you know, even surpassing these other Mac Pros, which doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense to me, but hey, I just ran the thing and it, that's what it told me I got. So uh, I don't know, it does feel very snappy and responsive. Um, I can't imagine that it's really better than more modern Mac Pros, but you know, number of 2802 puts it pretty high up in this list. All right, so that's a lot of the good. Uh, Geekbench score, I'm not really sure on. I don't know what that means. I don't understand why it's higher than, you know, a more modern Xeon, but it is what it is. Uh, it does feel snappy. But let's talk a little bit about some of the bad, I, su I suppose. So in addition to running Geekbench, I also ran Cinebench. Now, Cinebench 2024, uh, I can't do the GPU test. And again, you're probably not going to be running any sort of real rendering on a system like this. If you're doing rendering, you're going to want a system with a more modern video card. But uh, we're still getting the score of 215 down here with our uh, CPU rendering, which is about uh, almost exactly half of the uh, 12800 uh, 12th Gen i7. So that's the score that's the baseline for Geekbench, uh, which was the 2500, and they used the 12700, and this is the 12800 that's doubled our score here. So CPU rendering not great. It can be done if you have lots of spare time and this is your only machine. Yeah, you can do it, I suppose, but wouldn't recommend it. Uh, other bad, uh, I believe that upgrading the SSD in this machine, you can't use a standard SSD. Um, you have to get an adapter for it. Um, like I said, I haven't done it. Um, I do have a, a network file share, you know, so if I wanted to connect to uh, the place where I store my data store movies uh you know i've got a, an iMovie library here uh i've just got it on a network share that i can connect to and you know write data there so the uh, small amount of uh disk that's included here hasn't been a problem for me 
but uh, upgrading it, I guess, can be tricky. And I think if you don't have an Apple SSD to put in, uh, there are only certain brands that it will boot off of. Um, I think it's kind of picky about brands. Uh, you can go out and Google it, and there's probably lots of uh, articles and videos and whatnot on telling you the best way to upgrade the drive in this thing. Uh, it's got USB. You can get a USB drive. Um, maybe that's the best way to go, just to hook up some storage outside uh, if you don't have a network server running, but for me this has been just fine here. Um, now one thing I haven't talked about, uh, I'm using this trackpad here. I had it plugged in through USB, but now I'm connected through Bluetooth only. This is something I couldn't again do on the 5 comma one because I didn't have the Apple Bluetooth Wi-Fi card, but on this machine it just works without issue, so that's been really nice. Um, I really like this trackpad. I'm, I guess kind of weird. I think a lot of people really like to use uh, an actual mouse with a desktop computer, but with the gestures and everything you can do on a trackpad, I've just found it so much easier to do. Um, so one more thing I wanted to do uh, to kind of just show off this system a little bit. Um, let's actually start editing this video that you're watching in iMovie as we're making it. All right, so I've got my iMovie loaded up here. Um, I've been you know, editing it up to this point, so this is what you just watched here. And if I hit play here, um, with the gestures and everything, at least see what I'm talking about. I just found it somewhat much easier to do. I guess kind of weird. So you can see me holding up the really the trackpad here. So we just covered covered that in the video, and then I, I go on to talk about some other stuff here. But uh, I wanted to insert right here us editing this video. So I've got to be a studio recording once again. And um, one thing I can do now is I can switch back to my uh, finder here, and I've got this outro that I put in all my videos. So I can just go ahead and drag and drop that in. And, you know, that loads up. And there's my daughter, Lane, saying watch more videos. If you've ever wondered, like, did I tell her to do this? Did I tell her to uh, give her a script or anything? No, she uh, noticed that I left the camera recording one day, went in there all on her own, and said this, this whole line. So um, that's why she's not really in the whole screen. I think I would have framed it a little better, but this was all her. So as you can see, you know, moving around in, in iMovie here is really no problem. Um, adding videos, scrolling, uh, you can see I've done a bunch of cuts, and then we've got some transitions here, and just going through everything. I'll be using OBS Studio. It just, it's it's seamless, and it's super fast, and it's just as fast as using my uh, M1 machine to edit videos. So, you know, I really have absolutely no concerns about doing video editing on this machine. Uh, like I've said, you know, I've done a bunch of videos here already, but I just wanted to kind of give a quick sample of how things looked. All right, so uh, get you back into the video that I already recorded. So I think I'll leave you with some final thoughts. Um, overall, I've been using this machine uh, very successfully. Um, installing the OpenCore Legacy Patcher was fairly straightforward, um, as you saw probably in the previous video. If not, you can go back and check it out. If you can get one of these for under 300 bucks, I think that's kind of what the going rate for an M1 Mini refurb is if if you can find one that uh, you know that's in that range so I think the question is would you rather have an expandable trash can Mac or an M1 Apple Silicon Mac and I don't know that that's a question I can answer for you Apple has announced that at least the next version of Mac OS will still be supported on Intel chips and it's probably fairly safe to assume that the that the uh, open core legacy patcher team will support that for this Mac Though it is possible Apple changes enough where it's just not going to be able to be run on this system. Um, your guess is as good as mine at this point. Um, and then with the M1 Apple uh, Silicon, uh, you know that it probably will be supported for a bit longer. Um, as things transition away from Intel to the Apple Silicon, things are going to make more sense to run there. But I think overall this machine probably seems like it's a better daily driver than the M1, uh, at least at the middle of August in 2024. So I think if I had 300 bucks to spend and I had to go out and pick one, I think I personally would take the trash can Mac for now. But I think, you know, maybe in six months I'll have a different answer. Maybe the M1 is just going to make more sense. And that, of course, depends on whether or not Apple is going to continue to keep the M1s in their support matrix for their upcoming OSs. Uh, I presume as the uh, Apple Silicon advances, they're going to start dropping those off as well. The nice thing about the Apple 
running Intel is that you can always put Linux on it. Um, you can do a lot more things with it since it's more unlocked. The Apple Silicon hasn't really been broken yet. I think there is some base Linux distro that you can run on it these days. Uh, again, I haven't looked into that, so don't quote me there. But there's all kinds of things you can do with an Intel Mac that just aren't going to ever be possible with an Apple Silicon Mac. And, you know, I think the shelf life of this thing is going to probably be a lot longer extended by Linux, of course, once you get, you know, to a point where it's just too slow to do anything with the uh, Mac OS and current Mac OSs. And then when Apple finally decides that they're not going to produce any more OSs for Intel's, the uh, OpenCore Legacy Patcher team is obviously going to have uh, no recourse from that, most likely. So to wrap up, uh, I really do like using this Mac. Um, I like my M1 as well, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how things have gone here. So, so check out my other video as well. I'm going to be upgrading this thing from 14.2.1 to 14.2. I think uh, it's either 5 or 6. Um, had come out a little bit ago, and the Open Core Legacy Patcher team has, uh, as of a couple days ago, added support for that as well. So I want to show how difficult or easy it is to upgrade from uh, one Sonoma to another. Um, so check that video out. But anyway, thanks for watching. I look forward to your comments. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you in the next video. Hi, guys! Make sure to like and subscribe, and watch more of our videos later. Bye!